家伙是境外势力叫来的吗？不是。So I've managed to sneak back into China, and I'm currently covertly organizing and leading a lot of these protests against the Chinese government. This is, of course, according to verified Weibo users and government officials. I'm not even joking here. There's posts that have gone viral around Chinese social media saying that I, me, Serpent Zhe. Have snuck back into Guangdong Province, and I am leading protests against the government. Not only that, but these same posts made by verified Weibo users are also calling for my assassination. Hey, so what is it you've got over there? <laughs> oh, I see. Just the most badass wallet in the world. If there's one thing everybody needs, it's a wallet. I mean, we got to carry our cards around, right? A little bit of cash. Why not do it in style? Are you sick and tired of trying to shove a big, lumpy, wadded wallet in your pocket? Well, guess what? Exter's got the answer. High tech, tough, RF shielded, stylish, sleek. It's the wallet that gets you a compliment. It is the wallet that changed my life. TM, especially when it comes to paying for things. If you're looking for a gift to give somebody, and yeah, holiday seasons are coming up, so you know what? It's time to start shopping. You cannot go wrong with an exter. Hey, I know during the holiday season we all kind of pack on a little bit of pounds. So if we can't slim down, at least we can slim our wallets down. Make those pants feel a little better. If you go to shop.exter.com/serpentsaday, you're going to get a fantastic discount. And if you use the code serpentsaday, you will get a further discount. So go check it out. Go and grab yourself one of the most badass wallets in the world. And now back to the show. Now this is all, of course, complete horseshit. I'm not in China, and if I was in China, well, I mean, I'd be very tired from flying back and forth to the United States and China every day to go and lead these protests. But this shoots right to the core of a mechanism that's used by the Chinese government and Chinese nationalists whenever there is any kind of unrest or criticism of the Chinese government, and that is to blame foreign forces. You think I'm joking? Well, China's foreign ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian, we all know him. He's the biggest wolf warrior there is out there. His wife, who's also verified on Weibo, of course. But for those of you who don't know what Weibo is, it's the equivalent of China's Twitter. But to be verified on there means that you are a legitimate person and that your opinion counts. And I mean, the people that are saying that I'm in Guangdong have got millions of followers. Here, this guy's got 3.9 million followers. This other guy's got 1.8 million followers. You know, these are the people spreading these rumors around about me. And before I get onto Zhao Lijian's wife, the reason I know that these rumors are being spread about me. Is because I've got countless people reaching out to me that I know in China, my friends in China, my family in China, my wife's friends reaching out to my wife saying, "What's going on with your husband? Is he okay? Has has he been caught?" You know, it's ending up in people's WeChat moments. You can scroll through. You see my picture, and I'm being blamed as a foreign influence, like a CIA operative in China. It's absolutely ridiculous. But let's get back to、uh, Jolly Jian's wife. She's made a number of very high-profile posts, which are blaming foreign forces. Well, let me actually read exactly what they say. Who is deliberately spreading rumors to confuse the public and arouse the anger of the people? They must have a professional team. What is their purpose? Who is behind their backs instigating? The wisdom of the Chinese people is also very united. So your conspiracy and ruse will not succeed. In other words. Who's causing these protests? It can't be Chinese people. They can't actually legitimately have any complaints. They can't actually legitimately have any agency of their own. No, it must be some meddling foreign forces that are behind all of this, whispering poison in their ears, organizing these riots. Right? Luckily, she copped a little bit of crap for this, and there were a lot of people telling her, "Hey, what are you talking about? You mean us Chinese people can't talk for ourselves?" To which she gave a very lengthy thing about how zero COVID is great and all of that nonsense. But in amongst all her zero COVID rhetoric, she also said, "I am very worried that young people will be led by forces with ulterior motives to stimulate conflicts and hatred." Now. This has been a big talking point, and always is. Whenever there's some kind of an uprising, we saw it with the Hong Kong protests. We've seen it with other riots in China. 
When there's a riot in China against a private company or banks because people's money has been stolen or whatever the case may be, anti-Japanese uh, protests, things like that, it's totally fine. Whenever there's any kind of protest or uprising that specifically criticizes the central government, the CCP, like what we're seeing right now in China, guess what? It cannot be the people. It has to be foreign meddling forces. This is such a disgusting excuse. And like I said, takes agency away from the Chinese people. It somehow belittles them as if the Chinese people are incapable of having their own thoughts and feelings and ideas and their own ability to criticize things that they don't think are fair. In fact, this video of the protesters very, very clearly sums up the feeling of the people who are accused of being the puppets of foreign forces. I think it's incredibly important to take away from that video just how frustrated people are of being called puppets of foreign forces. I also want you to take away something that actually most people don't talk about, that China is ruled by a foreign force, and that is communism. Karl Marx, Lenin, Stalin. I mean, let's not beat around the bush here. The whole Chinese Communist Party is based on foreign ideas and foreign forces. So while the foreign minister's wife is going out there blaming foreign forces for the unrest and the uprisings and the disgruntlement of the people of China, what do you think the foreign minister himself had to say when asked about these uprisings and protests? Given the widespread display of anger and frustration at the uh, zero COVID policy in recent days across China, um, is China thinking about ending it and if so when? Could you repeat a question, please? Uh, a question from Reuters. Given the widespread display of frustration uh, with the uh, zero COVID policy, is China considering ending it soon? And if so, when? That's right. Absolutely nothing. And that's because he's not allowed to say anything about them because they're not supposed to exist. Now back to the whole foreign forces interfering thing. When accredited BBC journalist and reporter Edward Lawrence was arrested in Shanghai, he was actually very badly roughed up and beaten up and handcuffed and dragged away. Hey, hey, are you okay? Barry, call the consulate now. Okay. When he was arrested, 
Pictures were circling around on Chinese social media showing him and saying that he was a foreign influence operative, somebody there in the crowd to stoke up these protests. Because once again, it can never be China's fault. It can never be a Chinese person that has an idea of their own. It must always be a foreigner that's causing some kind of discontent in the Chinese people. Not the ridiculous zero COVID lockdowns, not the people who died by being burnt to death because they were locked in their apartments and locked in their buildings in Urumqi and elsewhere around the country, not the people's livelihoods and businesses that have been taken away by these absolutely ridiculous lockdowns, not the people who have committed suicide or the mental health issues that have ensued because of people being locked away like animals and criminals in their apartments for months on end. No, no, none of that. It has to be a foreign journalist or a foreigner who's somehow infiltrating the crowd and whispering in people's ears. Right. There's a lot of influence coming from outside of China on uh, these, you know, Western, er, pardon me, these Chinese media platforms. And um, you can see some of the protests where they're not even using the right dialect in the city. They know that some of this has been influenced from outside. Uh, don't don't think for a second that, that the Chinese government doesn't know what's going on here. And it seems to be pointing to foreign involvement um, in the protests in Shanghai. Now the American consulate, we know for a fact, if there's an American consulate, they could easily be a color revolution. And yeah. these things, are, these it looks to me, it looks like this thing has been sitting, fully set up, fully trained, ready to go, this is ridiculous, and it's an incredibly transparent plot by the Chinese government and those who support the Chinese government to try and make excuses for the shortcomings of the Chinese Communist Party. Why would they say I, of all people, have snuck back into China to cause this sort of thing? What kind of a fantasy land are these people living in? What kind of a bullshit situation is it when people actually open up their Weibo, open up their social media, see a picture of me and say, ah, I knew it. It must be a foreigner that's behind all of this. It's that Serpent ZA guy. He's the reason why these people are protesting. He's the reason why people are literally putting their freedoms on the line to go and stand up to a tyrannical government. Because let me tell you something about China. You can protest. You can protest all you want if you're protesting against a private company. You can protest all you want if you're going to protest against Japan. You can protest all you want if you're protesting about your housing complex raising your rates or some nonsense like that. But you may not ever protest against the government. You may not ever protest against the central government. Because when you do that, if you unfurl a banner, if you say something too loud, if you say down with Xi Jinping or you say down with the Chinese Communist Party, that's it for you. Your life is over. And the people that are standing up and sacrificing their lives and their potential rest of their lives by saying what they believe in, by making a stand to try and take away that agency from those people to say that it's not them standing up. It's not them that are brave. It's not them who are courageous. You are a disgusting, spineless coward. It's not people like me going into China who give these people their courage. It's not people like me sneaking past the border who are making them stand up for what they believe in. It's them. They deserve the credit, not me. To all the people in China who are standing up for what you're believing, who are standing up against this tyranny, this garbage, this prison warden who says that you get to stay in your cell for the next couple of weeks and maybe I'll let you out on good behavior, but then I'll just change my mind and suddenly everyone has to be in a cell. You guys standing up against these people, against this disgusting government, to you, I salute. You're the bravest people in the planet. You are. People that stand against tyranny, especially the insurmountable odds that you stand against, deserve nothing but respect. To the people of China, the freedom-loving people of China, stay awesome. If you want up-to-date coverage of what's going on in China with these protests and everything else, please come and join us for our live Friday show at The China Show. Link is in the description.
好，恭喜他人，再后，再喜，再先。